Okay, so uh, unit four then, uh, domestic electricity. Again, this is applicable for the WJC, um, GCSE physics and the double award still. Um, this unit then, I would argue that this unit is probably one of the most important sections of year 10 physics. Um, this is one of the sections that really pretty much all of it is important to everyday life. Um, so it's important you know this stuff. Uh, the difference, most of this unit, the difference between knowing it and not knowing it, could actually be the difference between life and death. Okay, so our objectives then. We're going to understand what the unit of power, mm, no, actually that should be energy, but there we are. We call it power, but really this is a unit of energy. We're going to try and calculate the cost of this power uh, in electricity and in, in gas as well it can be used. We're going to be able to describe and understand how the efficiency of domestic appliances is expressed. So when you go to a shop, how you can decide which appliance is the most efficient. We understand some of the key differences between AC and DC and what those mean. We will describe the function of safety features in main circuits, so fuses, NCVs and RCC, RCCVs and what that means. We are then going to try and uh, talk about how we calculate what fuse to use in an appliance okay, and why it's important perhaps to use the right fuse. And then we're going to talk about domestic wiring. Okay, so what a ring main is, what a ring main is, why is it used, and what the function of the different wires inside a main circuit are. Okay, so our useful links. We've got a variety of useful links for different videos on this. Um, don't forget again, Seneca. Go back to video one or PowerPoint one. The link is there for for Seneca. Okay, the unit of power. Now, strictly speaking, um, we're talking about energy here. So, we're talking about energy. So, this really should say energy. All right. Now, domestic uh, domestic electricity supplies. We're talking about large amounts of energy. If you think about a hundred watt light bulb, hundred watt light bulb transfers a hundred joules of electrical energy to light and heat every second. If you left that light bulb on for a day, that's 10 million joules, nearly 10 million joules. Now, the joule then is a far too small unit of uh, energy to be at any use when we're talking about electricity. So instead, we have a new unit, the kilowatt hour. All right, now kilowatt hour is important how it's written. It's a small K, capital W, small H. One kilowatt hour is 3.6 megajoules, or it's the amount of energy transferred if you have a power of one kilowatt each hour. All right, now this, yeah, like we said, we call it unit power despite it being an energy. Now the number of units used is the power in kilowatts times the time in hours. Now the exam board likes to be tricky here because they like to give you the power in watts not the power in kilowatts okay and remember one kilowatt is a thousand watts so if you have the power in watts you've got to divide by a thousand the other thing they like to do is give you time maybe in minutes or time in seconds the time has got to be in hours all right so one hour is 60 minutes and that's 3600 seconds so if you're given a time that's not in hours you need to be able to convert it and put it back into hours Okay, so calculating the cost. So you hopefully from the previous slides you know how to calculate the number of units. Now I want to talk about calculating the cost. So the cost is going to be the number of units times the cost per unit. Now the cost per unit dictates the unit the cost is in. Alright, it might sound a bit crazy, a um, bit whatever, but okay, it's common practice in the exam for the exam board to give you a cost per unit in pence, but want an answer in pounds. All right, so it's important that you remember these things, okay, and are careful when you read the question. Because ultimately, you've seen students make mistakes on this when they want pounds and they're given pence and vice versa. So please, please, please read things carefully. You can also talk about meter readings, okay? So if you're looking at the meter readings, the unit used is the difference between the two meter readings. Okay, so here we've got two meter readings, all right, and these are from a month apart. 
you take the difference between the two numbers, so in this case 173, so in a month this household used 173 units of electricity. Okay, so appliance efficiency. Now, all modern appliances sold in the EU, or sold, and I assume this will be still in the UK afterwards, will be sold with an efficiency rating. They'll be sold with a sticker, something like this on them. Now, what information is on this sticker varies from appliance to appliance. Now, originally, the ratings went from A to G. Um, although now, if you look, you've added, the, the, you tend not to see the bottom readings, but you tend to see now A+, A++, and A++++. Basically, as appliances got more and more and more efficient, they had to get more and more in the A region, because otherwise everything was just scoring A. Okay, like we said, depends on the appliance, but down the bottom here, there will always be the units used per year, per annum just means per year. They might well change it to say per year on yours rather than per annum. And then there will be three other readings and these will depend on what the appliance is. So this is for a fridge, so it tells us the volume of the fridge. Um, in fact, it's a fridge freezer, so it's gonna tell us the volume of the fridge, the volume of the freezer, and it also tells us the sound uh, it makes when it on. Alright, but you might see here power, you might see screen size if it's a TV, uh, you might see power per screen size, something like that. Alright, there'll be lots of information on these stickers. It's clearly labelled, uh, whether that's with a picture or with writing, so it's important that you look through these labels. Obviously, the higher up the letter is, the more efficient the device is. Okay, AC and DC. So AC, AC stands for alternating current. It means that it is constantly changing direction and magnitude. It is constantly changing which way it flows and how big the current is. This means that when we're dealing with AC stuff, we don't have a positive and a negative because they flip round. Now, our main supply in the UK is AC and our frequency of that flip is 50 Hertz. This means we have 50 cycles, not 50 waves, because we're not dealing with a wave, we're dealing with this positive negative cycle. We have 50 cycles a second. And our mains voltage in the UK is, we use generally 230 volts. All right, this is on average though. Although if you ever mo measured the voltage in your house, don't do that, it's quite dangerous to stick things in a plug and try and do this. It will range somewhere between 220 to 240 and all modern appliances are designed to deal with this. Um, this is historic, the fact the UK used to be 240, Europe used to be 220, um, and when we started building the internet interconnected grid that we spoke about in Unit 2, talking about the national grid, we had to average out our voltage supply, so we now stick for 230, that average between what we had and what Europe had. Now, direct current, a lot simpler. Direct current is constant in magnitude and direction. You, it flows from positive to negative. That is the way conventional current flows. All right, this current is what you get from a battery. It is what is inside most electronic appliances. So somewhere in an appliance, we use diodes to convert AC to DC. Okay, so domestic wiring then. Um, so all main appliances should now use the same colours of wires. If they're made and bought within Europe, within the UK, they will use the same colours to avoid confusion. We have a live wire. Now the live wire is brown and this carries current to the appliance. We place our fuses and our circuit breakers always on the live wire. All right, because ultimately we want to stop the current making it into the faulty appliance. The neutral wire is always blue, okay? And the neutral wire is set at zero volts by the power company and is there to complete the cut circuit. So the current returns on the neutral wire back to the power company. Now our earth wire are yellow and green stripes, okay? And this is, as it says, it's connected to the earth somewhere. So in your house somewhere there will be um, a stake going into the ground. Um, it might be just back to the power supply and you use their ground but somewhere it will be connected to the ground and this is there for safety. 
Okay, so an earth wire is there for safety. Now you only get earth wires in appliances that have metal surrounds. If something is covered in plastic, there will be no earth wire. Because the idea of the earth wire is, if an appliance has this exposed metal, all right, if the live wire ends up touching that metal case, making it live, then a large current can flow to earth, blowing the fuse, making the appliance safe, or blowing the circuit breaker, making the appliance safe. Obviously, if you've got a plastic case, there's no metal for the user to touch, therefore, you don't need that protection. Okay, so fuses. Now, fuses are deliberate weak points in a circuit. Hopefully, if you can see the GIF going on here, this would be a six amp fuse. And you can see that that wire is probably a lot thinner than the wires either side of it. And if too much current flows in it, it melts like that. And um, by the way, this is not slowed down. This video here is not slowed down. That is real time. And so you can see the time it takes for a fuse to blow. And that's important for later on. So yeah, too much current flows if there's a fault in the circuit, creating either a short circuit or causing current to flow to ground. This protects the appliance from catching fire because if too much current flows through something, like we've spoken before, it heats up. It can heat up high enough that it will actually catch on fire. Now, fuses come in three ratings for domestic uh, use, three, five or 13 amps. Yes, I know that's six amps, but that's for something else. Now, it's important that you only use the next highest fuse. Now, that might that means there is a big gap between 5 and 13, unfortunately, but that's just the way it is. All right, so how do you do it? Well, you use the power rating and mains voltage to calculate the current. Okay, so remember, we had our equation P equals IV. We want I, so I is going to be the power. divided by our mains voltage, 230. So you take the power, this is gonna be in watts, take care. Device might be in kilowatts. All right, um, so we gotta take care of that. Now, normal UK sockets are all rated to 13 amps. If you do this power calculation, that means that the total power any UK socket can supply is three kilowatts. Um, this means that if you want something that's over three kilowatts, it's gonna to have to be on its own circuit with a higher circuit breaker. Okay, so whilst fuses, fuses still used greatly in uh, plugs of appliances because they're small um, and they're quite useful there, but they are going out of fashion on domestic supplies um, on what we call the consumer unit or the fuse box. All right, and instead they're being replaced with these devices called miniature circuit breakers, MCBs. And the way you can think of them is as a resettable fuse. Now they trip if too much current flows into an appliance just like a fuse. But the advantages they have are twofold. One, they act far quicker. Remember the video we showed last time, how long it took that fuse to blow? MCBs pretty much will trip instantly the minute too much current flows in them. The other advantage they have is that they are resettable. All right, hopefully um, whilst I'm talking, you might have been paying attention to this animation here. All right, so we'll just let this bit tick through and we'll talk about the next one uh, when it comes back. Okay, so we've got here our miniature circuit breaker. Now, if our live wire touches the case, then what happens in them is this electromagnet becomes energized or gets too much power in it and it causes the whole thing to bend, trip in the switch. The other thing circuit breakers do is if just too much current flows, all right, so say it's rated for three amps and you're drawing like 3.14 amps, they have a heating element that's here Okay, and that heating element, that heating element, as uh, too much current flows into it, heats up a strip that slowly bends and again trips the circuit breaker. So circuit breakers can trip in one of two ways. Either you get a large current flowing through them, they trip straight away, or if you've got a fault that causes a small amount of extra current to flow, then they can trip because they get too hot. Now circuit breakers, MCC, MCBs, miniature circuit breakers, are there like fuses. They're, they're designed to stop a fault with the appliance causing a fire. What they're not designed for is to protect the user from a shock. Here we use what's called an RCCB, a residual current circuit breaker, sometimes called an RCD, a residual current device. 
sometimes called a uh, GFI, a ground fault interrupt. These all are basically the same name for the same device, depending on your market, where you are. Now, in normal operation, all right, in normal operation, the current into a circuit must equal the current out of a circuit. Yeah, think about our rules for current. Yeah, whatever goes in has got to come out. It's got nowhere else to go. Now, there could be a fault. So, for example, if you cut a live wire, all right, as we have in our example here with our electric chainsaw here, okay, if it cuts the wires and the wires touch, or the live wire touches you, or the live wire touches the ground, then the current in will no longer equal the current out. Generally, the live current will be bigger than the neutral current. And what that causes in this ring here is it causes um, electricity to flow in the bit that went up here. And again, that has an electromagnet in it that causes the uh, circuit to trip. All right. Now, these won't, however, trip if too much current flows into the appliance. They're not designed for that. As long as the current in the live and the neutral is the same, they won't trip, which is why you need a mixture of both. So, for example, in my house, on my consumer board, I've got MCBs that protect each circuit. Then I've got two RCBs, one for upstairs, one for downstairs, that protects them for things. The other thing RCBs are great for is things like um, protecting from uh, lightning. Okay, so in lightning, you would perhaps end up with too much current in the neutral wire because it's hit the house and it goes to the neutral wire. Again, they'll trip, which is hopefully stopping your devices from getting damaged, which is why if you notice our RCCB actually switches off both the live and the neutral wires, whereas an MCB only is on the live. Okay, now ring mains. Nearly all of the sockets in your house, depending on its age, depending on whether you've had things added to it or not, but if it's if it's still the original wiring, chances are they'll be on what's called a ring main. Okay, and the ring main here is this, is this bottom circuit. Now, traditional circuits, that, like we would build in school, we would call them a radial circuit. So here, um, what you have is you have a live wire, and the live wire is strung from plug to plug to plug. Then you have a neutral wire that is strung from plug to plug to plug, and an earth wire that is strung from plug to plug to plug. All right, I know confusion, I'll probably put these in the wrong order, but we would have, this would be our earth, this is our live, this is our neutral, in each one of these. Um, if you look, the electricity has only got one path. It comes here, down our live, through our toaster, back into our neutral, back out again. It can only go down that one path. Whereas our ring main, what you will have is coming out of the consumer unit, there will then be a split in the live wire and the live wire will go one of two directions. So will the neutral, so will the earth. Yeah, and if you watch the red arrows, you can see that as it comes out, the current splits. And some will go this way around the circuit and some will go this way around the circuit. So some will go like this and some of the current goes like this. What that means is we can make the cables thinner, as you can see in this diagram. We can make thinner cables on our ring main because the diameter of a cable is what sets how much current flows through it. Thinner cables can only supply a lower current because otherwise they get too hot, they have a higher resistance, they get too hot, they melt, they're no good. So big advantages of our ring main. We can have a thinner cable because there are two paths now for the current to flow. All right, each part of that cable carries less current. Ring main circuits also more convenient because as long as that ring main is going through the bit of the wall you want to put a socket on, you can just put a socket on. In a radial circuit, we would have to make sure we've got all of our wires in the right place and you know, the chances are it only is strung from socket to socket. There won't be extra wire here. Um, so we then can't do that. All right, obviously this is in parallel. So each of our sockets um, will get the 230 volts they require. And because again, they're in parallel, you get the same benefits as parallel circuits. You can operate each one independently. Okay, so over to you. Use the information that you've learned, hopefully uh, 
in your schools and offer this presentation to complete these past paper questions. Like I said before, if you look in the description below, there's a link to this document. If you're on the PowerPoint, um, then you can uh, close the presentation, click on this document, it should open up. Once you've done that, watch the final slide, and this is my review. Okay, so now I'm going to look at domestic electricity questions. So again, hopefully you have downloaded uh, and attempted the questions from the previous slides. So let's have a look at these. So first question, describe the advantages of household ring main circuits. The remarks, we want three points. Okay, so the first advantage we are going to have is um, we have what we're after two, so we can have thinner wires. As uh, there are two paths for electricity, um, or two paths for current, probably better than electricity. Current, um, and then what do we want? So, so that is so thin wires, two paths for the current. Okay, um, then we could say each socket receives 240 volts or 230 volts, whatever you want to say, uh, and can be switched. Independently. Yeah, that would be for that. Okay, explain which safety device uh, operates when the following faults occur. Ring main cir uh, circuit stops working when an additional fault free appliance is plugged into it. So that is going to be our MCB. And how do we know it's that? Too much current has been. Yeah, take too much current, that's what's going to trip that. Uh, lawnmower accidentally cuts the cable, so if it's a lawnmower accidentally cut the cable, that's going to be our RCCD. How do we know it's that? Current has leaked to ground. Can't see much of that one. Let's um, write that bit again then. So. Off. And we'll write it closer. So, um, let's go a bit more. RCCD. Okay, how do you know it's the RCCD? Because current has leaked to ground. There we are. Okay, explain why electrical uh, appliances with a metal casing require an earth lead, whereas those with a plastic casing do not. Okay, um, so, so, um, what, so our metal casing require an earth lead, whereas those with plastic casing do not. Earth wires. protect the user uh, if the live wire 
touches the casing, um, making it live. Plastic cases. Do not conduct. So it would be safe. Okay, so there we are. So our earth wire is going to protect the user if the live wire touches the metal casing or touches the casing making it live. As a plastic case doesn't conduct electricity, be safe. We don't need it there. Okay, so we're asked to give two uh, advances of a ring main circuit. So this is a very common diagram of a ring main circuit. Quite useful to have this somewhere so you can label up bits and pieces. So remember our two main advantages just says gifts, so don't need to explain. One mark for each this. So we're gonna have thinner wires. All sockets. receive um, 230 volts, 240 volts, something like that. That's what you need to write there. Okay, so state the function of the live wire. So live wire is going to carry the current to the appliance. Yep, live wire carries current to the appliance. Now the earth wire, so the earth wire carries current to ground if live wire touches metal case. That's what we need for the two marks, for the case where you can see it. Okay, so state the differences between alternating current and direct current. Okay, so main difference then. AC, constantly changing. Oh, it's a bit changing where you can see it. Changing. Direction and magnitude. Two marks, one for direction, one for magnitude there. Okay, the voltage, oh, the main supply is 230. Use equations from page two and the information on the kettle to calculate the resistance. Now, a couple of ways you could do this. Um, the way they want you to do it is to do P equals IV to work out I. And then you can use uh, I, so the way they want you to do it, let's write that down, so you do P equals IV, or you fa uh, and then you put that I into P equals I squared R to work out R. Now the better way to do it is use P equals IV and V equals IR to get P equals V squared over R. That way we've only got to do one sum. All we've got to do is we've got to say that R is P, nope, sorry, R is V squared divided by P. So 230 squared divided by the power 2760 gives us a resistance of 9.17 ohms. Now, those you do that sum on your calculator might go, why is it? Oh, you still can't see it there. Hang on a minute. One, oh, uh, sorry, 19.17. 19.17 ohms. You might go, why is it 19.17? Well, it's 19.16 reoccurring. 
6 reoccurring, remember the next digit would be a 6 again, so we're going to round up 19.17, so there's our answer just there. Okay, so yeah, we've got lots of information to this question. So, this question contains an awful lot of information for you to read through, um, talking about the different manufacturers, different categories, etc, etc. Um, before we get to the actual questions, it's going to involve us going backwards and forwards through the questions um, as we are doing them. So, um, use the information from the labels and tick three of the correct statements below. So, te television one uses less energy per second than television two. So, we look at one, we look at two. Um, and watts, remember, watts are joules per second, energy per second. So yes, television one uses less energy than television two, 32 compared to 78. Largest television always uses the most energy. So let's have a look. Now one to two, yes, two uses more energy than one. Then we compare two to three, and yes, that uses more energy, but if you compare two to four, two is bigger than four, and yet two uses more energy, so that's not correct. The purchase cost of television two is 1.5 that of television three. We're not given any information, oh there they are, purchase costs. Television 2 is 1 times that, no, because that's 1,000 for Television 2 and 1,500 for Television 3, so that's not right. The more expensive televisions use less energy. That's not correct either. Television 3 uses 40 more units per year than Television 2, well, that is correct. And televisions of the same energy rating don't always have the same power. Let's pick 2. So one and three are the same rating they don't use the same power so the boxes we should have ticked to the top one and the bottom two okay it is claimed that uh, power is proportional to screen size use the data for television one and two to determine if this claim is true now there's a variety of ways we can do this question um, but we're looking at a ratio between power to screen size so I would compare the two so I'm going to do power so this is for television one okay the power is 32 the screen size is 69 and we'll see what we get for that and for television two we'll do the same here 78 divided by 139 now if these are the same ratio then um, they would give us exactly the same number. So 32 divided by 69 is 0.46 and 78 divided by 139 is 0.56. So not true. Remember, always include that not true or true. Um, whilst it doesn't score you a mark, you would lose one if you've not got it in there. Okay, um, so we've got that equation and data from the energy label to calculate how many hours the label suggests that television two is used in one year. Okay, so for television two, we have got the unit used is going to be 108 and the power of television 2 well, we've just written that down that's 78 now we've got to be careful here it's power in kilowatts 78 was the power in watts so in kilowatts 78 we divide by a thousand is 0 0.78 so we do 108 divided by 0 0.78 That's not enough dividing, is it? 0 0.078. And that gives us 1,385 uh, 1, hours. Now, this is a classic case where you've got to be careful and think through it. Yeah, I knew that I was missing this zero here because when I got the answer, I got 138.5 hours. 
Now think about it, in a year, that's not a lot of telly. Alright, so that's why we needed to put that in, because in a year, we've got to, we've got to think about how much TV we're using. Okay, use an equation from page two to calculate the cost of using television two for one year if one unit of electricity costs 16 pence. All right, well we know we use 108 units. We know that one year we use 108 units. Each unit is 16 pence, 108 times 16 is 1,728 pence. They want the answer in pounds, so that's 17.28 pounds. Again, classic thing where they give you it in pence, but they want an answer in pounds, so take care with that. Okay, so the expected lifespan of a television is 10 years. Simon concludes that it will be more cost effective to buy and run television 2, but Sarah disagrees. And she says television 4 is cheaper. Okay, so the information we're going to need for this question is we're going to need to know the um, purchase costs and we're going to need to know uh, the usage per year. So we already know that for television 2, so if we write 2, so we know we're talking about television 2, for television 2 we already know that it's going to be £17.28 uh, for one year, so times by 10 is going to give us £172.80. The purchase cost is a thousand pounds. Is that right for television two? Yeah. So that is going to give us a total cost of one thousand one hundred and seventy-two pounds eighty for television two. Now for television four, television four is uses a hundred and. Let's just get that number again. 172 units per year times by 10 times by 16 over 100 so 172 units a year times by 10 for 10 years times 16 to give us the cost divided by 100 to put it into pounds 275.2 but it only costs £800 to buy, plus £800, gives a total cost of £1,075.20. Uh, so Sarah is correct. Okay, other than to save money, why should consumers be encouraged to choose appliances that use less energy? Well, if we use less energy, we need less power stations. And more, well, we have less power stations. Um, so less CO2. Simple as that. Okay, so another label question. Um, again, still looking at TVs. Um, a few years ago, they uh, changed the range. We had a G to A. Give a reason why we've now got them. This is what we spoke about earlier on the actual presentation. Um, too many appliances. We're in the A category. And if everything's scoring A, what's the point? So add those extra ones, we get that better um, split in the 
Okay, the power of the TV shown is 130 watts. The TV manufacturer averages on av uh, uh, estimates on average. TV will use 181 kilowatt hours per year. Okay, calculate the mean number of hours used per day. So first thing, let's work out how many hours in a year. So again, this is going to be like the sum we did. Time is going to be the energy over the power. So that's going to be 181 divided by the power, which is 0 0.13. Remember, this, is in, this top number here is in kilowatts. We need to put the bottom number in kilowatts to give us our hours. So 181 divided by 0 0.13. So that gives us a total number of hours of 1392. It's pretty damn close to what we had in the previous question, so they're obviously using similar things to estimate, which is good. Okay, that's per year. So you get that per day, we're going to divide by 365. So that gives us 3.8 hours per day. Yeah, it seems about right, about four hours a day on average. That's not a bad figure. Okay, so um, last question for this section then. Smart meters then. Use an equation from page two to calculate the cost in pence each kilowatt hour based on this display. So we have got, okay, so um, we've got smart meters. So on this display, we're asked to calculate the cost in pence each kilowatt hour based on this display. So what we need to do is we are going to take our power, 778 kilowatts. Okay, um, what we're going to do is we want to find the cost per kilowatt hour. So we're going to take our 392, £3.92. We'll convert that to pence first to be 392. We then divide that by 77.8 to give us an answer of 392 divided by 77.8 to give us an answer of 5 pence or 5, yeah, 5 pence per kilowatt use. Alright, so hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you learned some going through these questions and we've pretty much covered all of the uh, type of questions that could come up. Okay, uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, well done for making it through right the way to the end as well. Um, if you liked it, click like. Um, if you've got any comments about stuff that's missing, any improvements, anything you didn't understand, leave them uh, in, the bot in the comments below. Um, if you look around me, there should now be the playlist for all of these videos. Um, along with YouTube's uh, algorithm recommended one of our other videos that you should uh, go and watch. Um, also don't forget to subscribe to the channel, um, follow us on Twitter, link in the description, um, just to see the other sort of stuff that we produce. 